from that. Now moving on to the other game that was played on Saturday is the 49ers beating the Packers 24-21 to in the NFC Divisional Round. Man, this game had me worried. I will just start off by saying that. Javon, as the other 49ers fan on the panel, take me through the emotions that you felt during the course of this game, and ultimately, what did you think of the result? Shout out to Cousin James, who's actually at this game, and got to meet Dr. Disrespect as he posted a picture in the Stats Over Politics group chat that we always mention. Um, that's another story for another day. Getting on to the game. So, the Packers, they come out. They were playing with house money basically the entire game. They're the youngest team in the playoffs. Jordan Love's first year starting. Uh, you know, they just come off beating the Cowboys as, you know, heavy – underdogs as I did cash in on them um, live and pregame for them. So was on the Packers early against the Dallas Cowboys um, and then for them to kind of come in to, a, you know, more of a, a wet Santa Clara, you know, usually the West Coast playoff games, the, there's not really a weather element to it, but um, Niners did not play good for 90 Five percent of this game i'd say up until you kind of just look at all of the there, brock didn't have any turnovers but he was missing throws left and right debo obviously gets hurt the defense is not getting any type of pressure on jordan love um but they did force two turnovers so i feel like that was definitely the, di the difference in the game um jordan love was making you know pretty insane throws all day and i thought matt lafleur had a very i thought he had the better coaching scheme if that makes sense, I, I thought he had he got the best of Kyle Shanahan this game. Um, the defense for Green Bay played sneakily, very very solid. Um, could have had you know two interceptions. Could have had an interception early that was dropped. Um, I thought Aaron Jones looked like prime Adrian Peterson. <laughs> the way that he was averaging, I think he averaged like six yards a carry. He was he had um I think um, because he was hurt the majority of the year. And he had a five-game streak of 100 yards plus. I thought that was very interesting. So the run game was going for Green Bay pretty much the entire game, which kind of opened up the pass, the passing offense. And, you know, the Packers were hunting Embry Thomas as much as they could throughout the entire game, getting multiple pass interference penalties that, you know, flipped the sides of the field, which put them in red zone um, – a ton of red zone opportunities, but I felt like where the Niners defense really stepped up was in the red zone. Um, I think they only allowed uh, one touchdown throughout the red zone, if I'm not mistaken, um, mainly forcing field goals. So the defense was strangely keeping us in the game, although they were giving up a ton of yards, um, but they weren't giving up touchdowns. So they were definitely keeping us in the game at all times. Um, there was a, there was just a point in time in the game where we end up punting the ball. I think it was third. It was definitely, this is definitely in the fourth quarter. Um, we ended up punting the ball to, we could punting the ball back to Green Bay. Green Bay gets the ball and Aaron Jones has like the 60 yard run all the way down the sideline. That's where I was like, okay, we're down what 14. We're down like four. We're down 21, 17. So, yeah, we're down 21 17 at the time. I and, thought it was over at that point. Yeah. Like, there's like nine and a half minutes left, and he breaks oh, off no, of that it run. Time, no, I no, thought no, it was over. Minutes, yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was over. The defense somehow forces a fourth down, and they're in field goal range. So, I'm like, okay, they kick field goal. We'll be down. We'll be down through. We'll be down seven. So, if we score a touchdown, then we'll end up tying the game. The kicker shanks it left, and I'm like, I think every all Niner fans across the entire stadium, the country, wherever it was, all Niner fans kind of perked up like, hold on now. <laughs> you, know, you telling me there's a chance. We're like midfield kind of. Purdy hasn't been playing well, Was had a glove on throughout the game, and I was like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> and then he ends up taking the glove off. I don't know if you saw, um, there was a chance, there was a, a shot of him like wiping his hand like on a drop back. Like he's dropping mid play. Back and and wipes his hand on his on his towel mid mid drop back. Um so the weather was 
uh, I guess it weirdly affected him, but it really shouldn't have. It definitely didn't have any effect on Jordan Love, um, but he did end up throwing two picks. But um, that last drive for Brock Purdy was huge um, because the entire game didn't play well. I didn't think Kyle Shanahan was calling a great game for him. Um, Debo Samuel's out, so we're trying to run run plays with Jawan Jennings, which was very strange. I've never seen that before. Um, I thought we should have gotten Brandon Ayuk a lot more involved. Um, he had a huge catch on the final drive. Uh, George Kittle thought he should have got a lot more targets. Um, we kind of need him for pass pro a little bit um, towards the end of the game. Uh, McCaffrey did did what McCaffrey does. Um and then, you know, great teams find out to win, whether that's, you know, blowing teams out or they got to win ugly. And the Niners ended up winning extreme, like as ugly as possible because um, we had the lead for a short period of time. And then the Packers, bing, bang, boom, they drove right down, scored again. So um, for the Niners to be losing the majority of the game, be favored by nine and a half points. Um, and for them to kind of, you know, squeak out a, a win against the Packers who were the youngest team in the NFL. A lot of people, you know, throughout the season didn't even think they would make the playoffs and for them to go on this magical run that they were. Um, the Packers were literally like a quarter away, not even a quarter, like six minutes away from like, yo, if we beat the Niners. We got to go play. We got to go to Detroit. We just slapped up Detroit on, <laughs> on Thanksgiving. We go to the Super Bowl. So there was like a, a period in time where, Packer fans were like, all right, so you know, like when you're when you're when you got a parlay going and you start counting the money that you already that you start counting the money a little bit too early before the last leg cashes and then something goes wrong and everything kind of just falls apart and shits itself. That's kind of what happened with the Packers. I feel like they start counting their money a little bit too early before the game was over. And then, you know, next thing you know. Bing, bang, boom. Brock leaves a 60, what, three-yard drive. Goes like six for seven for like 63 yards on that drive. And then, you know, ultimately, Chris McCaffrey seals off game-winning touchdown. And, you know, Jordan Love. Even when the Niners scored, I was like, ah, we got to get a stop. <laughs> like, we, we haven't consistently been able to get stops throughout the game. And I'm just like, okay, like, we need a fumble sack. Uh, interception. Jordan Love's already thrown one, by the way. Um, and then what are the odds? Dre Greenlaw comes up with the second interception and thought he was Deion Sanders for some weird reason. Um, if he had the option, he probably would still be running right now, trying to score that touchdown. Um, uh, but, you know, ultimately the, the Niners, like I said, great teams f figure out a way to win, whether that's that's kind of, you know, what we kind of gave shit for Kevin through those like 10, 11 weeks when they were winning all of those close games. And Kevin was like, y'all want us to lose so bad, but we're winning. We're, we're winning. We're 10 to one. We're figuring out ways to win. And, you know, Kev would always come out and, you know, have that. that Tom Rosie back to Philly. <laughs> we're, I'm, I'm, I'm empathizing you. I'm, I'm empathizing. I'm, I'm telling you, this is kind of how I'm going through what you went through basically the entire season up until. Those we're not used to this, Kevin. We years. usually win games handily. Yeah, we we're not used to winning these games close. It's so fucking gonna, sick. It's, it's 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 a it's a bad, it's a compliment. <laughs> it's a compliment, believe it or not. But um, I think you got <laughs> a backhanded compliment like a motherfucker. You gotta give you gotta give you gotta give props to Brock Purdy because he played like pretty much like shit the entire game, other than the uh, the George Kittle throw. But that last drive was was really telling. And if he can just not play like that the entire game and do what he did on the last drive. I feel like next week we're going to get, we're going to look like more than ourselves. I don't think this was more rust. If anything, I think it was more like we didn't play good. The scheme was kind of jacked up when Debo went out um, and the Niners kind of scrambled to figure out a way to pull out a, a playoff victory. So we're all, yeah, we're playing again next week, guys. So stay tuned in for that. We're the primetime game. Probably, I think it's, I think we're probably on Fox. So um, you guys will be watching, as the whole world will be. Yeah, my favorite thing about Drake Greenlaw's second interception is when you see that photo of John Lynch in the background 
and John Lynch is going, get down, get down. And like John Lynch was one of thousands of people in that stadium, all screaming, get down. But Dre didn't care. He wanted his pick six. He said in the post game presser that Fred Warner challenged him and said, when are you going to get a pick six? All pro Fred Warner. Thank you. And uh, because, you know, I vividly remember when Fred Warner had his first pick six because it was December 21st, 2019, a Saturday night game against the Los Angeles Rams. And he picked off Jared Goff at the end of the first half. That was the one 49ers game that I've gotten the opportunity to cover as media during my sack B and oh, yeah, my senior locker. year of college. It was, it was a great experience. I will, I would often say that. Uh, but anyways, so I will always remember Fred Warner's first pick six because of that being uh, the game that I got to cover. But anyways, Dre was trying to get that. And um, I, I just loved what I saw from Dre in this game, really just stepping up when we needed to uh, needed him to the most And you mentioned the Aaron Jones run. Our guy Kaz says on YouTube, Aaron Jones was on a tear. And as I said to you, Javon, um, while you were speaking, that I thought the game was over when Aaron Jones broke away for that run. Because like you said, Packers already up four. I'm thinking to myself, okay, we the only way that we stay in this game and even have a chance is if we hold him to a field goal. They ultimately did. Carlson missed the field goal. And the 49ers go from just trying to tie the game to win the game. And before that even happened, they had to stop them from scoring a touchdown. Because if they go up by, uh, it'd be 28-17, game's over. The game is over at that point. A two-possession game with like five minutes to go. Um, But thankfully, it it all happened the way that it did. And uh, Kaz also was wondering, where's the Packers fan that be in here? Well, he was supposed to join us. He's supposed to be here right now. And uh, Javon and I were hearing from him after the game on Saturday, but we haven't heard from him since. So we hope Khalil is doing all right. And uh, we will likely see him in the YouTube chat again very Everybody soon. Can't and face the music. No, I, I guess not. We and we respect you and Kaz even more for being able to do that, Kevin. Um, and not to say that Khalil can't. It's just we haven't heard from him, so we don't know what's going on. We hope you're okay, Khalil. It was Junior. Haven't heard. Junior definitely picked the. He had a. Uh, he had different opinions. Yeah, and so uh, what what Javon is alluding to there for our audio only listeners is a, is a comment from Smooth, aka Kevin Dent Senior, on YouTube, and he says, "How many of you guys picked the Niners? I know one person who had doubt. I also know one person. So, hey, one person, can you tell us why the 49ers were ultimately able to beat the Packers in this game? Because, as you said yourself in the infamous group chat, it has been proven the pack is not back." <laughs> The pack is not back. I was lied to. I was sold dreams and promises. Um, but, I, you know, Tony came out here and said all the positives. But I'm going to tell you the real, that a Niner fan is not going to admit. Brock Purdy looks like shit. Keep them four picks. That should have been caught. Those four <laughs> picks happen. This game is a massacre. So let's let let's not sit here and, and Tony said he played bad. He played really bad. I'm talking about. Throw it right here. Darnell Savage said, oh, shit. This is just That's why I play defense. He's dropping the ball, man. And, and everyone asks me how I'm feeling. That whole game, I'm like, it's going to happen. I'm it's telling gonna... everybody all day. Kevin, what you got going on after the game? I said, I'm booking these uh, ATVs with the Niners and the Eagles after the game. They're on their way to Cancun all day. I'm like, they're coming right next to us. I got some cabanas, some margaritas. We sit here nice and pretty waiting to Real quickly, the guys at the front door. Real, real quickly, Kevin, I just wanted to interject to say, even the Eagles lost the Cancun Bowl this weekend. I saw on Twitter, <laughs> Cowboys won 31-27 to in the Cancun Bowl. Go ahead, Kevin, continue. Okay. So for, for those out there that are saying, what is the Cancun Bowl, I couldn't tell you. I, it was something made up saying that the Eagles were playing for the NFC Championship in Cancun. And I guess we lost, but that's 7 out of 8. Like I said, the last 6 didn't show me anything different, and I didn't even have to see that one to see the result. Cowboys dubs. Look <laughs> <laughs> who's tweeted it. <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is the audio only with I come on here and tell the truth about the Niners and, and they throw in shade and that's they're deflecting you guys. I'm like a counselor this episode. Um they're they're building themselves up and I'm here to let them know the Dolphins or not the Dolphins, the, the Lions, they'll catch the ball. Okay. You know what you know what is Chaunty Johnson Garner Johnson? He's going to give the ball right back to Purdy. Like he go. Just, yeah, no, just like he did with Baker. No, no. Y'all think good. he don't watch film? I'm, I'm telling you guys. Your guys is you, – you guys just – Tati said it was Russ or he didn't want to blame it, Russ, and I'm not going to sit here and do Russ. 
But, I mean, a lot of your starters did sit out the last game. Y'all thought it was sweet, and, and the cheese heads came to play. There was a couple missed plays, and not to make it too long, but when it came down to it and Jordan Love got the ball, 49 timeout or 49 seconds, however many timeouts he had, I said, there's no way. I'm pouring my drink. I told Toddy we were going to go live. I'm getting ready. I'm working on the graphic. I said, oh, baby, it's coming, and it's coming now. All my friends said, if Aaron Rodgers couldn't do it, how is this light scheme going to do it? I said, this <laughs> is perfect. I didn't want to blow out. I wanted to be tied up on the line. The kid from Utah, four years, Tony's bank theory. I had a whole monologue prepared. He's rolling right. I'm like, he's going to run. He looks left. And I said, Alyssa, he's going to fucking throw it. <laughs> he's going to fucking <laughs> throw it. Oh, my goodness. That was a horrible pick. But the first one. Green Law, like you guys, we've been getting his flowers all episode. He was the right man at the right place. He was – every time there was a deflection, they made it. And like I was saying, like I always come in after the Eagles game, one team made plays, another didn't. When it came down to it, the, the Packers really didn't want to punch you guys in the mouth when they had the opportunity to. Like Ty said, they were they were counting their money early, and they just couldn't figure it out. So hats off to the Packers. And um, now Ty's take on Jordan Love being the best quarterback in that division really doesn't look that crazy. So shout That's out to Ty. Kirk my lead. I'm taking Jordan Little over Kirk, but don't ask me because Wes is gonna say I'm a hater. <laughs> yeah. So Kaz, hey, yeah, yeah, Kaz, 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 yeah, I realized that I was still <laughs> muted. Thank you, Javon, for, for Kaz, jumping in there. Kaz um, says uh for the audio see legend. No, y'all not about to jump on my guy. Y'all not win the Super Bowl this year. Y'all think you're so damn cute. You ain't. <laughs> So, and to uh, follow up to follow up on that, Javon, I just want to say that Kaz also said to me directly in uh, on TikTok, which Javon doesn't have an account still. We're still working on that. Uh, but Kaz said to me on TikTok as I laughed at his coin flip video, he said, "Oh, y'all riding high? You're feeling good? You ain't gonna win at all." And I screenshot that. I saved that. I'm gonna wait to reveal that later on. But just, just know I got I got that I got that receipt. Uh, waiting, but did you want to respond to Kaz, Javon? I mean, you know, the Niners have a field day against this quarterback that they're going to play against next week. His name is Jared Goff. Um, very familiar with his game. We used to play against him twice a year when he was here in L.A. Fred um, Warner knows him pretty well. Fred Warner knows him pretty well, so Nick Bosa knows him very well as well. Um, but, you know, this is a different team. The Lions are riding high. He's got the whole city behind him. Detroit, I fuck with a lot of Detroit comedians um their music they have out there um so i'm watching all them post all their stuff on social media and i'm just like it's all coming to a dead next week so <laughs> um you know this is the first time since 91 they won the division going to the playoffs all of that and what better way than to get to the nfc championship and lose so i'm, I'm very excited for this game because i would have thought we would have been playing uh, if you would ask me before the playoffs started we probably would have been playing the cowboys but um playing the lions is um you know this is what dan, dan Campbell's second year coaching second this is second year third year third year i think um and they got a whole bunch of fresh new talent you know you got jameson williams i ross sam brown all pro jameer gibbs who looks like alvin Kamara 2.0 um aiden hutchinson you know cj garner johnson kevin wanted to feed him to the wolves didn't want him anymore and now Let's not act like he had a hell of a season. <laughs> I get he had a pick. Let's not act like he wanted. He was top. He wanted top three safety money. He wasn't a top three safety. He, he's Congrats making on the pick. He watched film. He's making. He's making uh, plays in the playoffs, and that's you know what guys would love to see for their team. So, um, it's going to be a very interesting game. I think the Lions are going to put up a hell of a fight, um, and they're going to. They're gonna come. They're gonna give the Niners their best shot because they think the Niners are at their low point. They think that they're wounded a little bit based off of this performance, and I wouldn't blame them because Niners didn't play particularly well, but still got the dub. And uh, that's only for just setting up for the Niners to just come out swinging uh, this Sunday in the NFC Championship game. 
Yeah, well, Cousin Marcellus says, uh, I had the crystal ball with my predictions. Give me my flowers while I, I'm here. So he's taking the link lives on. And, and he also <laughs> said, told y'all Josh Allen wasn't going to get it done. What did he say to you, Javon? So um, I forgot. I don't know why I forgot. I was going to post this on the group chat. So he sent me a clip when he was on the episode when we did the preseason picks. His uh -huh. preseason Super Bowl pick was Niners against the Ravens. And he screenshot, oh. he screenshot, he screen recorded it and sent it to me. It was like, I got the, I got the script. I'm the guy, he's like, I'm in my crystal ball. And I was like, you see the future, like that's so Raven. So uh, he must have just seen the Super Bowl logo with the colors because that's what Khalil was on. That's the last thing that we heard from Khalil is he was just saying, it, it, it's scripted, it's real. Look, <laughs> look at the colors. <laughs> so, um, yeah, Marcel, if you would have put, you should have sprinkled like $20 on that and mm, just put a little, nice. put a little, Put a little ticket in there. You'd be looking, you'd be riding high right now. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Um, and you know that the 49ers winning uh, is pretty significant because now I'm Cowboys make fans are uniting Next in Cancun. Next year when we do like all of our preseason picks, I'm going to be like, y'all got to put like at least sprinkle like five, ten dollars on it because the shit might fuck around and hit. So. <laughs> or you'll end up like me and you'll pick the Jets to play the 49ers in the Super Bowl and it'll be over one weekend. That was me. Five plays. Yeah. That was me. Four plays. Yeah. It, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, it was rough. Uh, but but anyways, as I was saying, uh, the 49ers win uh, created some pretty magical things as Cowboys fans and Eagles fans unite in Cancun. Uncle Manny says, way to keep it real, Kevin. And uh, Kaz loved how you said Brock Purdy uh, looked like shit. Um, Smooth says, win in advance, that's all that matters. Survive in advance, baby. And uh, Manny Anderson, former Sac State football player and friend of the pod, says, let's go Lions. Smooth says there are only four teams that can win the Super Bowl, and the Eagles aren't one of them. Facts. <laughs> Wes said, Kev is always capping for the pod. Kirko is better than love. Shake my head. And uh, yeah, Yes, yeah, Smooth. I know. Kevin's a Lions the guy now. Just like, just like he was a uh, – yeah, Wes did creep in the Kevin comments. Kevin's going to bust out his Megatron jersey this week. <laughs> yep, he, he sure will. Uh, and uh, there are a lot of really good QBs that are on vacation now, as Smooth says. And, uh, you know, apparently Brock Purdy, he's not one of them. We'll get to that later. A lot has been said about Brock Purdy. But as we leave this game, the 49ers beat the Packers 24 to 21. And, um, you know, I'm I'm just relieved as a 49ers fan. That's that's the best way I could put it is I'm relieved because – I, Kevin, just probably around the same time that you were preparing your monologue and to have a, a impromptu live show just so you could crap all over the 49ers. Um, during that identical time, I was sitting at my office in Woodland trying to watch the rest of the game before I had hella work to do. And I started thinking to myself, oh, God, what am I going to say on Monday about the 49ers fumbling this opportunity? Because I was the one who said like a month ago that the 49ers were going to cruise through the NFC because the NFC is such dog shit. The NFC does remain dog shit, but the 49ers almost lost amid all of it. And so uh, I'm just relieved that the 49ers were able to handle business and beat the Packers. Um, <laughs> and Smooth says, it's your own fam that turns on you. And Kaz, be said, a fan, man. Kaz said, Super this is an Eagles hate pod. What the hell did I get myself into? Man, I don't know, but we appreciate you for sticking with us, Kaz. Is now